evening. Tonight's project is I'm going to build a table for my direct garment printer to sit on. Um, so this is uh, part of the series of building my own direct garment printer. Um, please be sure to check out my playlist for the complete set of videos on how to build one from scratch based on an Epson P600. Um, also, um, do me a favor, click like on my video so that other people can see it and click subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. So this table is going to be 28 and a half inches high. Um, that is a, a height that I found to be very convenient to work with that, that puts the platen at about 36 inches. And um, it's going to be 32 inches wide and 48 inches in depth. And, all right, so if you'd like to know more about this table, I uh, shot a video that will be posted shortly on this is a table with wheels on it that also has my miter stand mounted to it. And it just gives me a little more storage, a little more working area. So anyway, I've got the first cut trimmed to 20 or marked for 25 inches and I've got the miter stand adjusted to make repeatable cuts. So I'm going to do it to it and make all these cuts. So I've got my pieces cut, 25, 44, and my 28 inch legs. So to prevent mistakes, I'm going to put my 28 inch legs over here. And then I'm going to start in on, I'm going to take half of my boards and put them away. Set those to the side, and now I'm going to start installing my screws. And you know, I think I think this needs one more piece in the middle. All right, so I've got my boards laid out, so I'm going to go ahead and start screwing things together. in here first. Alright, one down, one to go. So I've got my second one put together and now what I need to do is I need to install legs. And um, I'm going to have my legs run front to back. put this together in a similar fashion. So I want the bottom of the shelf to be five inches off the ground and that's what the five inch block is for. This is coming together. <clears throat> so I'm only going to put one screw in here and I'm going to square the second one. And then I'll screw the rest of it in. There we go. So there is something that I think is worth seeing in this. So um, I've reversed how I'm attaching legs. So I've attached them to the top because I know where the top is gonna gonna land. But the bottom may not be set right. And that's where my block comes in again. So here I can line that up and just push it ever so slightly to get it in the right spacing. And I know that all of my boards are the same length because they were cut on the miter saw. And there are a number of ways to do this. That one's perfect. And um, it's worth noting, if you don't have fancy tools, you can still do this with any number of, of less expensive tools. Uh, 
Uh, I just happen to have invested in good tools because I do a lot of this. sort of a self-perpetuating cycle because I have the nice tools, I build a lot of stuff, and I need the nice tools because I build a lot of stuff. So there we have it, the frame is put together, and seems pretty, pretty square actually. So the next step is to cut a piece of uh, MDF or something similar to go in here and um, the bottom shelf is going to be a little bit funky because of where I placed the legs but the top shelf will be a piece of cake. So I'm at a point where I'm going to pause this video because I'm out of MDF that's large enough to um, fit underneath here and that is the next step in the assembly of this. I do have a piece of half inch plywood that is perfect for the top of this and that's where it's going to go but I need to get um, I need to get the bottom installed first and then once the bottom's installed I'll paint it paint the whole thing and then I'll affix the top and route the edges of it at which point um, I can stain and polyurethane the top friends so I've gotten the uh, bottom piece cut which is 44 long and 28 wide and I've got to deal with the corners and so the easiest way to deal with the corners is to use a carpenter's square, big or small, and a pencil. So in my case, the um, legs take up three inches in from the sides and five inches in from the ends. So I just simply mark, the way I do this is I mark the dimensions and then I come back and I use the square to draw a line where I need to make a cut and it's just that simple and now you know where you need to cut out in order to fit the piece in. So the next step is to come back with a jigsaw. I happen to have a DeWalt, uh, what is this thing, DCS331 Max XR 20 volt jigsaw. Great jigsaw, um, a little bit on the heavy side but it works fantastic. You can use a corded one, you could use a cheap one, you can use a hand saw, you can use a coping saw, a any way you cut this out is fine. Um, I just happen to have this and this is what I think is the right tool for this. And um, you don't want to cut on the line, you want to just cut a little bit inside the line because you want a little bit of extra space to maneuver or these things, I mean, you know, I'm not building carpentry, I'm just building a table for a direct garment printer to sit on. So I'll do the other three and then I'll show you how this fits in there. Okay, so next what I need to do is I need to get this in here. And so you can see I've cut out the edges. And I'm hoping, yeah, that's not going to work. This may be quite a bit tighter than I thought it was. Yeah, not happening. So the other way to do this is to cut it in half. And that's what's going to happen. No big deal. Sometimes that happens. I've got this cut in half and now it should be relatively easy to get it to go in here. At least it should be. So it looks like one side's a little tighter than the other. And it's a lot tighter. So I'll take it out and check it. All right, so this side's miscut. That's why it's really tight. Yep, I just made a mistake. No big deal.
All right, so now all that remains to be done is for it to be screwed together. Alright, so the only thing that's left to do at this point is to cut the top um, and to paint the whole frame and the sub, sub shelf black and uh, polyurethane the shelf and then uh, sand and finish the top. And... Alright, so I happen to have a three foot by four foot piece of uh, three quarter inch plywood which is what I want to use for this project. And um, I've taken the scraps that I cut out from the bottom and I'm going to use them as stop blocks. And so what I've done is I've positioned them on this side two inches from the edge and on this side two inches from the edge so that when I attach the, the top it's going to land exactly where I want it to. So I'm going to use screws to tack these in place but I'm not going to put them in completely because I don't want them to stick through the other side. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some polyurethane on the frame and then I'm going to flip it over and find something heavy to set on it. And I'm actually going to set it out of the way 